Today is a Monday, September 11, 2023. Smuggling of Iranian Oil into Pakistan Involvement of 90 government officials and 29 politicians unveiled. Islamabad, Pakistan is grappling with an annual loss of over Rs 60 billion due to the illicit smuggling of more than 2.81 billion litres of oil from Iran into Pakistan. Shockingly, the latest reports also expose the involvement of 90 government officials and 29 politicians in this widespread illegal activity. Media sources have disclosed that the Civil Intelligence Agency has submitted a comprehensive report on the oil and currency smuggling issue to the Prime Minister's House. The report highlights a disturbing revelation that the profits from oil smuggling are being funneled into the hands of terrorists. According to the findings of the Civil Intelligence Organization, a staggering 995 petrol stations across the nation are participating in the illegal sale of Iranian oil. Even more alarming is the revelation that Pakistan State Oil, PSO, vehicles are complicit in transporting smuggled Iranian oil. This oil is brought into Pakistan in Iranian vehicles, referred to as Zamiad vehicles. Furthermore, 76 vendors near the border have been implicated in the illicit oil trade. The report goes on to state, in Pakistan, 722 currency dealers have been involved in the Hawala Hundi business, with Punjab leading with 205 Hawala Hundi dealers, followed by Khyber Bakhtunkhwa, KP, with 183, Sindh with 176, Balochistan with 104, Azad Kashmir with 37, and the federal capital Islamabad with 17. Notably, the interim federal and provincial governments have initiated a nationwide crackdown on individuals involved in hoarding dollars and other essential commodities. Stringent crackdown on hoarding and smuggling announced. Islamabad, the caretaker federal minister for interior, Sarfaraz Ahmed Bugdi, has announced a sweeping crackdown on hoarders and pledged zero tolerance for smuggling activities. During a press conference held on Sunday evening, Alongside caretaker Federal Minister for Information and Broadcasting, Murtaza Solanji, he emphasized that all state institutions and provincial authorities are fully committed to eradicating the problems of smuggling and hoarding. The minister further mentioned that operations against smuggling essential commodities such as wheat, sugar, urea, dollars and more are in progress, with significant quantities of sugar and urea already recovered from various parts of the country. Sarfaraz Ahmed Bugdi also reported that 59 individuals engaged in the illegal Hawala Hundi business have been apprehended. He clarified that no one will escape legal action, and the government is determined to curb smuggling and hoarding. Additionally, he announced cash rewards for Pakistani citizens who assist authorities in identifying smuggling networks and hinted at forthcoming rewards for reporting illegal immigrants in the country. Responding to inquiries regarding terrorist threats from Afghanistan, the minister urged the Afghan government to honor the Doha Agreement, ensuring that Afghan soil is not used against any nation. He pledged unwavering defense of every inch of the country. Furthermore, he highlighted the ongoing campaign against human trafficking and collaborative efforts between federal and provincial governments to formulate a comprehensive policy on illegal immigration. Serious action against smugglers is strongly encouraged. Second news, judges and armed forces personnel exempted from National Accountability Ordinance, says Attorney General. Islamabad, Attorney General for Pakistan, AGP, Mansour Awan, has argued that the National Accountability Ordinance, now, of 1999, which governs the National Accountability Bureau, NAB, does not apply to judges of superior courts and armed forces personnel. In his response to the Supreme Court of Pakistan regarding PTI Chairman Imran Khan's petition against amendments to the now, 1999, introduced by the previous coalition government, AGP Awan asserted that the constitution outlines a distinct procedure for holding judges accountable. He emphasized that judges' accountability falls under the purview of the Supreme Judicial Council, SJC, established to safeguard judicial independence. AGP Awan clarified that Pakistan army officers are not immune from accountability but stated that NAB cannot act against them. Instead, the Army Act and Army rules outline the procedure for holding them accountable. 
The AGP also raised objections to the admissibility of Imran Khan's petition, citing its prematurity in light of the Practice and Procedure Act and the existence of a similar petition pending in the Islamabad High Court. He suggested that Imran Khan's stance on NAB amendments appeared inconsistent, as he advocated for people's representatives in parliament and urged his legislators to resign from their seats. AGP Awan insinuated that Imran Khan may have ulterior motives behind his petition against the NAB amendments. Thanks for watching and subscribing to the channel. Thank you.